Hello, hello, everybody. Tonight, we are continuing our Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team Adventures. Last time, we went on a bit of a spree and beat up... Well, first, we actually cleared the buried relic, so that's no longer... Hey, go here! We did that. The first 99th floor dungeon out of the way. Huzzah! Yay. And then... We went and beat up Raikou and Suicune, and then I think uh, did Suicune's area again so I could evolve! I still find the animation a bit stiff, but as well as the sadness that comes with evolution, there are no text box, like, uh, character portraits anymore. Sadness. But today, we are going to continue that and see about... Beating the Mirage Pokemon Ho-Oh on the mountain far away. Other such things that we might do if nothing pops up after that is we may very well go and recruit all of the legendary birds because that is one, I think, the only other prerequisite, I believe, for a dungeon... That I think leads to Lugia, but I'm not completely sure. I'm going to make sure that my things are good. We're going to take extra apples, just in case. Because we don't know how long Mountain Far Away is, so we need uh, extra apples. I, and like, <laughs> the only time that I'd be like, oh, I need like my super duper apples. Like, uh, even though I only have one huge apple and one big apple. I think I'd be able to survive if I just took a bunch of apples. I'll take a extra two apples. We have a few max elixirs and such. I'm gonna see if you have any, like, apples. Uh, two huge apples. I will take these. And then I will put them in storage for, like, the next... Like, surely there's got to be another story-ish... Well... I say story, but like post-game, there is an event, here's an excuse to go to a dungeon event thing that would then lead to another 99 level dungeon. Oh, and I guess, speaking of that, before we head out, from my minor bit of uh, grinding, quote-unquote, it's not all that much grinding, let us see how many of the friend areas that we can grab just because, why not? Friends are my treasures. Hmm. I guess we'll start with the age, since these are like a pair. Let's go ahead and grab the pair. Why not? Congratulations. We'll just buy as many friend areas as we can. Because we can. So why not? Hmm. And, uh... I guess I'll buy the most expensive one left and see if I can buy one more. And that leaves the three that I can no longer buy. Sure thing. And I will store my remaining money. And now, let's make sure that Shane is with us. And we shall go... And first, do our ritual save. Out of paranoia, paranoia, everybody's coming to get me. And now we shall go to Mount Faraway. Oh, I yeah, I don't have Surf on me, darn. <laughs> I must go and grab Surf and then we can go to Mount Faraway. I feel like this is a little silly. Like, I kind of get it because, oh, we want to include... The HMs from the Pokemon games, but at the same time, why not just have it be like, you, if you go, like, you have it, I feel like a nice compromise would be if you just had to go to one of the dungeons in that area, or even just the, each dungeon once with Surf, and then after that you could go there whenever, because you proved that you could go there, but oh well. Let us go. Will this be another, like, 30-level dungeon? A 40-level dungeon? Or will the game decide to murder me with a 99-level dungeon? Yeah. 
But as we... Oh, yeah. During things. Do, 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 do. Go after foes so we can murder people. During my grinding, I set him to that. I forget why. <laughs> ah, the trail of moons. But... While we wander through this mountain, this mountain that is supposedly far away, suck it, Volt, uh, Electrode. Electrode space, nobody loves you. Hello, Snowrun. How dare you bite my grass, friend. But as we wander this dungeon, I must have slept odd last night because my side is oddly aching. Either that or my body is deteriorating. Either way, pain. It has simultaneously gotten both kind of... Okay, rude. Both gotten kind of better and kind of worse in various aspects. It's not too bad, not like debilitating. Just an aggravation. How dare you. Once again, how dare you. Aside from that, I finished another drawing. It was of Sneasler, because again, I've just become obsessed with Pokemon Legends Arceus. I dearly hope that they make another Legends game. Like, I'm not sure, like, if it, like, it has a very unique, what's the word for it? A unique, uh, ba ba ba, like, flow to it. Like, more than likely, it'll have to... They'll try to recreate the same... Ah, go and basically duel these giant Pokemon. But... I don't think, like, uh... Which, to phrase my mind's thoughts in an appropriate manner... I do find it kind of funny, because I do remember some people being like... Ah, it has no, like, uh, gym battles. How dare. But... I just know that the Pokemon community, the fans, or at least the very loud and angry fans, would complain if a potential Pokemon Legends Arceus sequel did something similar to what Legends Arceus did, which was have you fight the Pokemon nobles. Recruit some nobles, fight other nobles. Well, not recruit, but like... Endear yourself to some nobles who are nice and are just like, yeah, you can exist, I'll help you. And then you have to fight others. I like that system. But I just know that if they tried to reuse that system, like, just off the bat, even though that's literally what they did with every other Pokemon game, uh, there's a contingent of Pokemon fans who would complain. Then again, Pokemon fans complain about basically everything. But in the end, I deeply hope that they make another Pokemon game like it. But at the same time, I feel like a lot of people, again, the Pokemon community, would deride it for being samey and trite. For how dare they have a Pokemon game, like spin-off series, that focuses on gotta catch them all. Even though, yes, it's not every Pokemon to ever exist, but it is a decent chunk of Pokemon for that region. Excuse me. Because I deeply enjoyed the flow of Legends Arceus, and that's why I'm replaying it. I like it so much. The feel, the vibe, the oddity of making it an isekai, where you play a character who's been flung from their own world out to do the bidding of Arceus. And then Ingo is there as well. Why is Ingo in the past? Who knows? Like, again, a part of me would like... A new idea has formed. It probably wouldn't work work, but... What if there was a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game? But it was essentially a Legends Arceus kind of spin-off sequel to the Mystery Dungeon games. Already changed palette and music, and then we're only ten floors in. 
but yeah, like I would deeply adore a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon spin-off sequel that takes like the idea and world of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. You know, the Mystery Dungeon showing up, there's a calamity, you're a human sent there to be a human of prophecy. You can recruit Pokemon, you have your chosen partner who is your friend, dear friend. And then, from there, instead of having it be a 2D top-down dungeon crawler, what if it was a 3D, like, super action game? I would be totally down for that. Maybe like a Pokemon hack and slash to a degree. Is this a like a remix of previous dungeon music? That's what it feels like. I like it. I like it a lot. We have gotten a lot of money from this dungeon. Who needs to actually save people? I don't even think you get anything aside from a statue if you... Jesus Christ, all the traps. But I don't even think that you really get anything... Like, tangible... If you get Lucario rank, except for a... Statue outside of your... Rescue base. But yeah, in the end... I deeply wish and hope and I <laughs> I was aiming for that one in the corner and the game was like, would you like to fight the one right in front of you? The answer is no. And let's see, I think for some reason I had that disabled. I'm trying to remember from when I had that disabled, but I cannot recall. And now he can murder Pokemon to his heart's content. But in the end, I just really hope that the Pokemon Company do more interesting things with the Pokemon franchise. Like, again, Legends Arceus, the Mystery Dungeon games, just interesting things that do things... I, I say things a lot here, but interesting ideas that couldn't really be done, like, in the mainline Pokemon games. I just feel like there's interesting stuff they could do. Again, Legends Arceus, it just it was a breath of fresh air. I still don't know why the game makes your ally stupid when it comes to corners. Is it really that hard to program in, hey, ally Pokemon, uh, do not try to attack from around a corner. If there is a move that cannot be done from around a corner... In the link. Because maybe he's just trying to do screech from around the, co uh, the, co uh, the corner. I Brain w wanted to say cover for some reason. But it just feels odd. But in the end, back to my rambles. I just hope that the Pokemon Company does a lot of interesting things. With the Pokemon game series. Do more spin-offs. Do kind of like half spinoffs like the Legends Arceus game. Because it is odd be that Legends Arceus feels like it is and isn't a spinoff. It is a spinoff because it do doesn't play like a traditional Pokemon game. The fact that you can sneak up on Pokemon, you can craft items... And that's how you mainly do it. You have an inventory system you have to deal with. And just like a bunch of minor things up to and including the lack of gems in the game. But all of the other things that it does just really reinvigorates my love for the Pokemon games. Sure, it's not a traditional Pokemon game. But all the things that it does as a Pokemon game is a lot of fun. There's enough old aspects that it's not completely alien. It's n it's not a mystery dungeon. The game loves to do this, huh?
Hmm. Oh. Ah. Because my ally decided to be stupid. I probably should have just not moved so that he would move up alongside me. But fine. We shall go to war, I suppose. I will slam down this wall. But yeah, I don't understand why the game is just like ever so subtly moving towards... Oh, what's that? You never run into monster houses? Psych! Now monster houses are the only way to get to the stairs. You fool. You imbecile. You meringue. I guess I'll take out this one first. Lower the amount of damage that will fo be focused on him. Oh, and minor sadness. <laughs> but while I was doing my grinding and suffering through the hell that is escort quests on the later dungeons, never doing that again, I... Uh, experienced the pain that is, oh, I'm going to drink this ginseng from the floor. No, don't do that. I wasted a ginseng. It is very saddening. Much pain, yes. I found it in a wall, and I thought everything was good. Well, isn't this grand? <laughs> Thank you, syncretism. Just like... <laughs> Ah, you have paralyzed me. But by paralyzing me, you have paralyzed yourself. Mahaha. <laughs> if only that worked on everything like a tract. I don't think it works on a tract. But I do not know. But yes. I still, once again, dearly hope that the Pokemon Company make more Legends Arceus-type Pokemon games. Because it's just so interesting to me. It's so unique. Especially because it leans... Sure, it leans away from the battling, and I wouldn't mind if, like, future iterations of that kind of gameplay style that Legends Arceus has put into the universe had more combat to it. More random trainers that, or like, I don't know, bandits. Just like, random individuals whom would like to battle you in Pokemon battles out there in the wilderness of the world. Or hell, what if there was a Legends Arceus type game that was like a full-on sequel, but <laughs> you follow like the same character that you played in Legends Arceus, except they return to the like, normal Pokemon world that they, like, had, were in before they were basically kidnapped by Arceus. And then you get to explore Sinnoh, but in that kind of Pokemon Legends Arceus type way. And I forgot that I did not put the audio back up to adequate levels that it can actually be heard. Meh. But I think that would be very interesting to make a Pokemon Legends Arceus, like, gameplay game and visuals, but set in a more traditional Pokemon world. Imagine, and what's extra cool is if they did do a Legends Arceus sequel, and it's basically Hisui, but it's now modern-day Sinnoh instead, they could even like, shrug off certain things and bring back the extinct Pokemon because if we take it as you being the same character, I forget that it's like Ray and Akari I think is their default names, quote unquote but yeah, if it's the same character it would be easy to be like ah, your connection to ancient Hisui has allowed you to find the Hisuian Zoroark and Hisuian extinct Sneasel and Sneasler. In fact, what if that was a part of the thing? You want to 
What if there was a danger falling upon the modern-day Sinnoh, and you being the person who went through and saved ancient Hisui that then became modern-day Sinnoh? What if something bad was happening and you had to essentially recreate the... You had to recreate the... I'm trying to find the words for it. Like the noble system, the nobles that looked over an area of the land, find wardens that can look over the, the nobles and protect them from evil humans. In fact, that would actually be kind of interesting to explore. Well, that's just very rude. But I think it would be very interesting to explore because certain things like the fact that the character that you play in Pokemon Legends Arceus would know a bunch of people just like, hey, you look a lot like your uh, ancestor. And it would be interesting to see, like, again, the main character from Legends Arceus isn't really a super duper character character, but I feel like there's a lot of potential there for meeting characters from the past, but it's their descendants. Like, imagine the main character meeting Cynthia, and they hear the piano, and they're like, Oh god, not again! Somehow she tops Volo by bringing out ten Pokémon. In fact, that would be a hilarious thing. It was just like, yeah, I had a, a dickhead ancestor, but my family just passed down this legend of this legendary trainer from back in the day, the ancient Sinnoh, who just kicked my ancestor's ass. And so I have trained for, so that I would never lose to such a Pokemon trainer. And then, once again, you could meet Emmett. Although I still kind of prefer my idea of there being a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon type game set in a Hisui-inspired region, and Emmett has become a Sneasel. I just think it would be amusing to me. You motherfucker, I am looking up what is in there. I want to know what is in there, you bastard. You motherfucker. Fucker. What are you? What are you, you, sh you slutty little motherfucker? Because something's in there. It's probably just an evolution item, but at the same time, I do not know. Also, I think... Hmm. Just want to make sure... see what is behind the lockbox the friend bow ah i think that increases your chance to recruit pokemon which doesn't really interest me i'm not a recruiter granted maybe i will come to regret those words when i actually do want to recruit like the legendary birds or something but once again kind of annoying that the game is like haha lockbox but we're not going to give you a key you have to bring keys yourself which, on the one hand, this game is all about replaying dungeon after dungeon. On the other hand, it's a very annoying thing to do. Although, I guess we're... <laughs> I mean, in later games, they go from rescuers to uh, explorers. So, maybe they really just wanted you to go on explorations. You go, aha, there is a hidden thing here. If we come back later with a key, we get things. Which I guess I can understand, but it's just my perfectionism kicking in where it's just like, but I want to do everything now. I want to do everything that could possibly be done in one go. But at the same time, not really. Like, 
it's very peculiar, like, well, not peculiar, but when it comes to things that I want to complete in one go right now, it's very much the vibe of it, I guess. Like, I'm not going to complete the Pokedex entry of every single Pokemon that I find in Legends Arceus before I move on and do something else. I might like, go out of my way to grind a few research levels out of them, but I'm not just going to go crazy insane and refuse to progress until every single Pokemon that is in my immediate vicinity has a finished Pokedex entry. A perfected one? No. I am not that insane. But speaking of perfectionism, one thing that I really need to break down is, is for my writing. Because I do a bunch of writing. I think there might be a link in there if, to various writing things in my link tree. But... One thing that I really need to break out of is... With my writing, I have a bad habit of wanting to make a perfect, like, first draft. Which is completely against the spirit of what a first draft is. So I would just go and just try, like, again, make a perfect first draft, have no spelling mistakes, basically edit as I type. And instead of having a pseudo-flow of consciousness that I can then edit after the fact, have a framework to work with, have an imperfect first draft that I then build upon, that's something that I need to work on and actually do. Instead of suffering through just wanting to make the perfect thing now because, ah, failure, I instead embrace that and be like, ah, it is a mistake, but I can fix that mistake and improve it later. That's something that I need to work on. So that I can just write more, write more quickly. Sure, the editing process and proofreading will be longer and more annoying, but... The hardest part for me when it comes to writing is beginning the writing. Partially because I think my brain is anticipating the perfectionism. We're just like, ah, but if I... I don't know how to begin when I should just really either say, this is the idea of what I want to happen, but I don't know how to put it in there as a fully written word, and then just, like, come back and clean that up later. Or just... Put random words down of like, hmm, I have an idea. Let us try to make that idea a thing. I really need to work on that. Go ahead and eat an apple. I do have my bow on me, do I not? Stamina band. It is indeed there. Because I forget if, like, we ran into, like, a Crawdont and they had taken it off me or not. Because they are little bitches. Where are the goddamn stairs? You tried to scratch me, and now you will die. Also, I think that if there was a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Hisui region kind of game, I think it would be neat purely because then they might have a Sneasler character. And I really like Sneasler as a Pokemon. Granted, I, al I already enjoyed Sneasel as a Pokemon. Why, you bastard? <laughs> I hate the game does that, where it's just randomly and now your partner will move to a different place in relation to you, even though that uh, accomplishes nothing. Why? If they are one square away from me already, I do not feel like they need to move. Because when I move, then they can move with me and orient themselves that way. It just feels like very weird, like decision-making there. It's not like there was a Pokemon that was be killed, killing me. 
being in my immediate vicinity that partner goes time to murder. Time to kill the Doug Trio. We're here to murder a family. You know, if I was, like, a lower level, I would probably be scared of wasting so many move stuffs before we get to the legendary Pokemon. The boss fight. I assume they're gonna fight us. Like... The only time that a legendary Pokemon at the end of a dungeon didn't fight us was... ba 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 Latios. And that was just because... Uh, we were rescuing her. I had to wait an extra second just to make sure that Shane wouldn't go. And now I'm going to stand in the precise spot that you would want to get off the water and uh, put at risk of me warping to somewhere else in the dungeon. Like, I feel like if your Pokemon ally can't go onto water and you're, like, moving to swap places with them, that they would just move to the side. And then the warp message could be... Uh-huh. Congratulations. You threw a blinker seed at me and it did nothing. You moron. But yeah, like... It, that kind of, oh, your partner's gonna be warped to a new location should be reserved for... Moments when there's literally nowhere else your partner can move. But elsewise, it would move to the side or back or something. So they'd still be one square away from you, but... It wouldn't slow you down a lot. Excellent! You have done well to come this far. You have overcome countless challenges, fought through many dangerous situations, and finally ascended to the very peak of Mount Faraway! Truly only the Chosen have reached the summit. However, this is not the end! I am Ho-Oh, the builder of rainbows across the sky. Only when you overcome me in battle, that is when this mountain is conquered. This is the final challenge. I know that's a lie because I know Mewtwo is in this game. Here I come. Maybe he means like... This is the final challenge for, like, oh, it's playing a remix of the title theme in a combat mode. Da, 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 da. And not only, oh wait, no. It's not a remix of the title theme. It's a, <laughs> it is a remix of Runaway Fugitives. Maybe it's just using the motif of Runaway Fugitives there. But either way, wondrous. Not the Fire Blast. <laughs> Ooh, that's a lot of experience. Huzzah. And once again, I don't think that you can recruit legendaries on your first pass-through unless they're unique, like, experiences. Ah, diddly darn. I will quickly, like, check the guide of, like, dungeons and how to unlock them. Maybe see if there's anything... I'll just take these two and then nuke them because they are E-rank, and there's no way I'm doing E-rank. Like, sure. I am sorry, people that send mail directly to my base, but I am not going to save you. It may want a gummy. Too bad! Alright. First, let's see. Is there any dungeon? Well, there is the Unknown Relic. That's new. I think we got that from getting the aged things, the diddly dees. And nobody is, like, in different places, so... 
it's just kind of funny that we go in there and he's just like, this is the final diddly D. And then there's like not even an encore. He's just gone. I'm going to keep Surf. We'll put Surf away unless we learn that we need it. And now I'm going to grab two more apples out of fear. Here, apples. Come to me. Apples. Apples. I wonder if I'll run out of apples before I beat, like, all the major, like, event dungeons that I care about. Let me quickly see. Do you have any huge apples on for sale? Oh, you do have two diddly D apples for sale. I shall buy them and then put them into the baby bar. I'd like to store two huge apples. Huge gigantomantis. And now, I'm going to see... Guide, tell me. Yeah, it's just not much more. It's just like, ah, you did this. No pass buried there. Northern Range, that's the Latios. Oh, and now I need to recruit Ho-Oh on my team. Dark. Diddly dang. So we do indeed need to recruit Ho-Oh. In that case, I'm going to quickly... Do... Luckily... Ho-Oh uh -oh cannot be recruited on his first thing. So, I guess it's not a bad thing that I let my ally beat him. But now, I guess we shall first, I guess, see about buying the remaining friend areas, if we can. Of which I do think we will be able to. At least two of them. One might scrape away. Prince of my treasures. Let's see. I, yeah, we're going to be able to get two of them, but I'm not sure about the last one. But yeah, I think I got uh, distracted, in which I was going over that. I'm unsure if I actually want to do, like, the special Wonder Mail dungeons, because that they just unlock more dungeons to go through. And at this point, it's not really about the dungeons and stuff again, like grinding up to Lucario rank. For me, it's more about, hey, special events. And I guess I could also grab a key. We'll get Shane. Oh, wait, I don't I don't think I have an extra key. Oh, Shane's already my team. I'm a fool. Wow, it's almost like my partner should be wandering behind me when I have him in my team, huh, game? I wonder why they made that change. Is it like a technical limitation because they like, removed something when they gave you the ability to have, like, non-leader and partner teams. And I do not think that I have a key. So I do not... Oh, and also we'll need Surf back. Because we're going to Far Mount Faraway again. To beat up Ho-Oh again. And uh, get him to capitulate and join our team. Again, it could be that he can't be recruited on the first run. It could be that my ally got the last hit. I find it a bit odd that that's like Unknown Relic, Waterfall Pond, Dark Knight Relic. I could have sworn that Unknown Relic was on this page. Like, I know Solar Cave. I don't know Dark Knight Relic. I don't know Grand Sea. I don't know Waterfall Pond. Uh, Joyous Tower and Purity Forest are 
like, original. I know they were here before. Far Off Sea, that's new for some reason. But I'm gonna go to Mountain Far Away. And because I almost forgot, save state. Haha. -ha. I outsmart you, video game. You already played me for a fool in many different ways already. I feel like I get to have that. And once again, we're... Nope, that just leads to a dead end from how the geometry usually goes. Ah, I leveled up. My level's up. My poison has intensified too. Umbreon is poisonous? Umbreon is poisonous. Weird. Oh, now he is on the follow me hours. I'll go ahead and set him to rabid kill everyone. And if this does not go and uh, basically if Ho-Oh isn't recruited this mission, what we'll do instead is go on a quick romp and see about recruiting the legendary birds. Because I know that they are required for another event. And uh, if we do do that, go and recruit the legendary birds, what I might do is then recruit Ho-Oh off screen? Because, like, I, I, there's not much, like, this is a weird thing to talk about. It's like, this is me playing a game and, like, commentating on the game and my experience. But this post-game, yeah, I'm gonna admit, isn't all that interesting. Mostly due to the fact that it's all kind of samey. It's mostly, like... The thing that I find a lot more interesting, like, it, it's actually kind of funny that I went out of my way to... Ah, well, we won't go up this level, we'll kill this guy and get that money so that we can get that final friend area, because why not? But, I find it kind of funny that by going and making yourself more powerful with the gummy abilities, you actually go and make the game less interesting because you don't have to worry about traps all that much. If your partner has Trap Avoider and you have Trap Seer, then, like, a major part of, like, navigating dungeons in the late game is n completely negated. And honestly, thank God for that. Sure, it does make the game itself less interesting in that regard, but it also mitigates the annoyance that is eternal in the post-game. And I would rather have a boring post-game with, like, spikes of, like, character and story rather than be annoyed most of the time. Because the thing that really interests me about the post-game is, like, the events that send me to the dungeons. And that's why I think I like the, like, initial part of Blue Rescue Team. Because it's like... There are points where the game expects you to go and, like, do Rescue Team efforts in between story missions. And they're like, ah, yes, you did this, go and do some filler episodes, a training arc. And it just felt a lot more natural and interesting. As opposed to... Like, ah yes, just go and do dungeons. Because, like, again, I like the game, but I mostly like it for the vibe, and the world, and the characters. As basic as they are, I just massively more enjoy it that way. It's basically like the, the gameplay is fine, but it's the world and narrative that is the main force behind the game for me. Once again, I probably would not be that interested in other mystery dungeon type games 
unless they also had a world and narrative that interested me. Although I think that's, honestly, for a lot of games in this day and age, it's like a basic first-person shooter might be fun to play, but only so much it needs, like, an, an active flavor to it to really elevate it and make it something worth experiencing. It's also kind of like, if you had just a normal RPG with like, ah, you can, that had like Pokemon, like, elements in that you had like the, bibbidi bibbidi bee, I'm trying to think, the elemental rock, paper, scissors. I don't think I would find it as interesting if it were not Pokemon as well. Again, would depend on the actual aesthetic and world and characters and overall narrative of that hypothetical, similar to Pokemon, but not game. It's just extra amusing that Mystery Dungeon, like, seems to have the most, like, cult classic tendency of all the Pokemon, po like, spin-offs that I've seen. Granted, it could just be my personal bias that I seek out more Mystery Dungeon stuff than the, like, uh, what was it? Motherfucker. But yeah. As opposed to... I'm trying to think. What's that one Pokemon spinoff where you, like, that was on the DS that you had to tame Pokemon by drawing around them. And you were a Pokemon tamer who was like, I'm going to live alongside the wild Pokemon to protect them. Like, that's an interesting idea, but I vastly prefer Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Again, I just wish that there were more Pokemon video games that just had you play as the Pokemon. And it wasn't just, ah, Pokemon and people. In fact, from what I've heard, there are some people that wish that Pokemon Mystery Dungeon would go the extra step and, like, not have the main character be a human who was flung into the Mystery Dungeon world. And instead, wished that the Mystery Dungeon games would just have you be a character in the Mystery Dungeon world. Which, honestly, would be an interesting idea. But at the same time, that kind of would be slightly difficult in that the human falling to the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon world is also kind of how they set up the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon world. As well as it also nails home that, like, yes, these are Pokemon, but they are essentially people. Which also has the funny potential side effect of making people wonder, hmm, I wonder if the Pokemon of the normal world are similar to these Pokemon of the Mystery Dungeon world. Lots of things to think about. But da, da, da. what was I talking about? I was talking about something, and then that led me to talk about Pokemon spin off games. I forget. But I just really like the vibe of the Mystery Dungeon games. And I wonder how that came to be, exactly. I wonder, like, uh, I, I, I wonder if Mystery Dungeon is itself a series that just so happens to have done, like, spin-off collaborations with, like, Pokemon, in this case, or Chocobo's Dungeon. And I think there was even, like, uh, Persona? Oh, no, not Persona. Technically, that would have been Shin Megami Tensei that... 
I think it was called Skull Bros on the the Abomination not handheld Nintendo game thing that you like it was like oh it's VR but not the Virtual Boy the Virtual Boy there was a Shin Megami Tensei spin-off I think dungeon crawler type game on the Virtual Boy which once again makes me wonder if Mystery Dungeon is a series or if it's just a very specific genre. Like, what was the first Mystery Dungeon game? That might be something I'll have to look up before I end the stream. Out of curiosity, while you ramble to yourself, remember to stay hydrated. But in other thoughts and things, I kind of wish that they would also do, like, OVAs and anime specials, or maybe even movies that were more like this. Like, imagine a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon movie that was its own original story that didn't try to follow the games at all. Because on the one hand, I really need to watch the OVAs and specials made around the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games. Maybe read that one manga. <laughs> Although I do think, if I recall, I might have been spoiled on the ending to that manga, where <laughs> for the rescue team based manga, it is a young child person, and they actually get to go home and they choose to go home, which is just amusing. Like, it would be one thing if, like, in the game itself you had a choice. It's like, do you wish to go home or do you wish to stay with your dear friend in the Pokemon world? Because, what? Like, Blue and Red Rescue Team came out in, like, 2005. That makes me wonder when the... What's it called? The... The isekai genre really started to take off. I wonder when, because in a way, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon feels like an OG, like, isekai. A person falls to a fantasy world, not their own. Basically have a friend come pre-packaged with that world and wacky powers in a new form. This is an isekai. And even in this game... They don't give you a choice to be like, do you want to go home or would you like to stay? No, the game makes it for you. <laughs> As the credits roll, you dearly wish to see your dear friend once again. And I just find that highly amusing. <laughs> and then in the manga, they were like, psych, the human wants to go home. Which is just amusing to me. Die, man. This mushroom Spider-Man will die. How dare they do this to me. Granted, it's not like they can actually harm me. I'm sleeping and I don't even feel you attempt to leech the life from me. Well, then the second time after it actually hit, you'd think I'd wake up. But I guess I did. Technically. I wonder what would happen if Nintendo, like, officially partnered with, like, Wizards of the Coast for D&D, &D, or I think Paizo is their name, for, uh, what was the other one? That other not D&D &D game. I completely forget it. I completely forget its name. It's a different uh, tabletop RPG system owned by a different company that I think was created specifically out of, ah, we dislike what Wizards of the Coast is doing for like fourth edition or something. Was there even a fourth edition? I never hear about a fourth edition. All I ever hear about is like five, like all the only editions of D&D &D I hear about is like, 
the original one that wasn't called D&D. &D. Then there was D&D &D technically first version, or was it like D&D &D beta version, then first version. Then there was two, then I think three, three E. Or it was like two, two E, three, three point five. I don't know if there was ever a four. And then they went to uh, fifth edition. And somewhere in there, amongst all the changes of editions, a group of people were like, we want to make a tabletop RPG system that we like and has the things that were either, like, taken out or changed with one of these, like, Dungeons & Dragons editions. So essentially, they were like, we'll make our own tabletop RPG with blackjack and hookers, and then it took off Pathfinder. That's what it's called. It's called Pathfinder. But back onto the original thought is I wonder what would happen if Nintendo partnered with one of those companies, Wizards of the Coast, Paizo, to then release an official, like, Pokemon Dungeons & Dragons or Pathfinder rule set. I think it would be interesting. Granted, they're very late because a ton of people have already homebrewed their own Pokemon adventures and rules. Once again, someday would greatly enjoy to have the ability to play a Pokemon tabletop RPG. Especially a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon tabletop RPG. Because I feel like that would be two different things. Like... One are, like one tabletop RPG for the you are a human and your Pokemon are kind of your weapons and allies. And then a second tabletop RPG for one where you play as the Pokemon. It could all work, I'm telling you. Then again, I think Nintendo could still probably get away with it. So long as, like, granted, if they did do it, there was the possibility that they would have the risk of then going out and DMCAing the various unofficial fan rules and rule books and stuff. Because, like, even though some people kind of exaggerate Nintendo's attacking of fan content, they're not completely wrong. And I feel like in the situation where Nintendo would team up with a tabletop RPG company to make official tabletop RPG stuff, then comes the possibility that fan-created tabletop RPG stuff then becomes liable and at risk because Nintendo only really attacks fan creations in certain directions. And it's usually like if you are directly profiting or directly competing with them. With a then smattering of sometimes they'll attack the porn. But yeah, usually it's like, so long as it's like an original thing, like truly original, and doesn't come, like you don't make money off it, you don't compete with Nintendo, they'll let you do what you do best. And people are like, oh, I can't believe that Nintendo DMCA'd and took down this fan game that was basically just one of their games completely. And not even really altered in the sense of the base experience of playing the game. How could they do that? Yeah, because, like, some of the ones that I remember people be like, Oh, Nintendo is attacking this fan creation. One was, like, Super Mario Bros. on the NES, but multiplayer. Guess what? <laughs> that is technically competing with them. Yes, at the same time, they, like, make it kind of difficult to actually buy their older games nowadays, but... It is still the original Mario Bros. game. Just slightly modified in the graphics department. 
I don't think that you could just take Doom, put different, like, graphics over it, and be like, ah, this is my creation. But then there was also, like, that, like, in-browser, like, uh... I forget exactly what it was, but a long, long time ago, there was, like, a pet project of some people that essentially was like, hey, you can play an NES game in your browser, and it'll graphically make the, like, uh, graphics. Yes, graphically make the graphics. But it will alter the graphics to be, like, 3D to a degree. And kind of have depth. And while interesting, at the same time, that is just straight up, hey, uh, this Nintendo game, you can play it for free, which is not kosher. You can't do that. <laughs> then there are times where, like, the most infamous one is probably another Metroid 2 remake, but, like, I don't understand why people are that angry about it. Because it was literally, yes, it was a remake with new graphics and everything done by, done by, from scratch, essentially. But it is a recreation of Nintendo's thing that, unfortunately, due to timing, they released their own remake of soon after they DMCA'd it. A part of me wonders if they also had pity because it was DMCA'd only after it was officially released, so you can still technically find it out there in the ether of various, like, relinks and read, like, downloads. Then other, like, projects are most, that get taken down are mostly because they are straight up profiting off it. Like, again, the hilarious thing where, like, either Nintendo or the Pokemon company will just be like, Hey, I know that you're drawing, uh, Pokemon porn, and that's completely fine by us. Just, can you not, uh, have it be restricted to your Patreon? You can post it anywhere else. Just, uh, don't have it locked purely behind your Patreon, and, uh, everything will be good. And then so many, like, if I had a nickel for every time a artist who prevalently makes Pokemon porn completely changed and made their own original work in response to them saying, hey, you can still continue to make it, just don't have it solely be on, like, locked behind Patreon, uh, I would have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's odd that it's happened twice. I think I made that joke once before, but eh. But other similar things that weren't porn, but still had, like, money coming in, was, I think a few Pokemon fan games that did have their own, like, Pokemon fan creations, but in the end it was still, like, literally Pokemon. They had the original Pokemon, it had the same Pokemon aesthetic and everything, and they had Patreons. And I wonder if it would have been possible for them to get away with it if it was like, hey, give money to us developers so we can make uh, our passion projects. And then maybe it wouldn't have taken them down, but the fact that it was a fan game, which very much directly competed with the core series at the time, or at least I would say so, more so then than, like, Scarlet and Shield. But... Yeah, it was still competing with the games that they were making a fan game of, and were also directly profiting off it, with the profit directly linked to the project. It's just very unfortunate. Very good! You have done well to come this far. Truly, although, yeah, we know that again. Your very arrival is evidence of a truly powerful warrior, and it is also your right to challenge me. Surpass your own limitations. And show me your power in its unbridled entirety! Come on! And I shall send my partner away so that I get the final hit. Still love this remix, at least the beginning bit. I like it. 
You missed your fire blast. You cannot harm me. And he wants to join. Wants to join the team. A new member joined. They can keep their name. Good for you. We did it! That was good work today. I should get some rest. But yeah, if you ever want to make a, a project based off of Nintendo stuff, the core thing is, if it's a game, make the, like, gameplay completely different from, like, the actual games that you're inspired by because then you're not competing with Nintendo. And two, if you are indeed, if you do have a Patreon, don't have your project linked at all. Don't even mention your project. Be like, hey, this is a Patreon so that you can help support me as a creator. And then maybe it will fly under the, <laughs> the radar. If there's enough separation between the money you're earning and the project you're making, you should be fine. But also, the third tenet of making a fan creation of anything, it is always at risk. It will always be at risk, no matter what, no matter how safe you play it. The only safe move when making a fan creation is to essentially make your own ripoff that is, like, can't be accused of copyright. That is the only thing you can do to be as safe as possible. If you really do want to make a fan creation, either don't tell anybody about it ever and release it Shadow Drop style, but then nobody will really know about it unless you're lucky, or, like again, be very careful, don't compete with pre-existing Nintendo games, don't use pre-existing graphics, and, like, make it wholly... Like, make as much of the fan stuff original, and don't make money off it. And then maybe you'll fly under the radar. The main hits are always competing directly with the original thing and profiting off of your fan creation. So yeah, save complete. One day, in a small cave in the distant west, Ooh, team act. Hey! Get a move on! Or not. It's Blastoise and Charizard and I guess a Venusaur, maybe? <sighs> this is rough going. <laughs> What's with you? You're gonna whine about it? Let me think. Was it you who wanted to explore this place? Saying you'd found a new cave and all. Yeah, I just happened to be swimming by in the sea when I spotted this cave. I didn't expect it to be a dungeon this rough. Heh! <laughs> I thought a different combo would be a good change of pace. But you're pathetic! So much for Mr. Big Shot Blastoise. What? Call me pathetic, will you? What you've seen of me so far is nothing. Never underestimate Blastoise! Ah! Are they gonna fight? <laughs> he just blasts off in various corners of the room. <laughs> there! You're still feeling frisky! That's the spirit! I think we're getting close. Let's keep it up! So you did that to motivate me. Thanks. Hey, no problem! Let's move! Hmm? What's wrong? Are you still wiped out? No, that's not it. Just now. Did you hear something? I thought I heard a voice. No? I don't hear anything. Is it you who disturbs my sleep? Is it you? Who's there? Who are you? Show yourself! Me? I was engineered. Created only to fight. The most powerful of all Pokemon! I'm going to assume that was Mewtwo. I've always wondered who would be the most powerful Pokemon of all? What? Is there someone besides Rayquaza? Is that it? Well, sheesh, Rayquaza destroyed a star! Wah, 
Buffet. Who else but Rayquaza would be able to do that? Wah, Buffet! But there's Groudon. Isn't that tough? Is that true? Why, even Alkazam's team couldn't defeat it. Wah, Buffet! What are you even contributing to this conversation? Legend has it that Groudon shaped continents. It's an incredible Pokemon. Wah, Buffet! Hey, it's me. Hey, you came along at the right time. We're having a little argument about who the most powerful Pokemon happens to be. Neon, what do you think? Who do you think is the most powerful Pokemon? Well, I did, in fact, beat both Rayquaza and Groudon, and could totally lay the smack down on both of them any time I wanted. If I actually had Fly, so I could go back up there. But yeah, I think it would be me. <laughs> Come on, I beat him! <laughs> I am correct. Well, uh, I know you want to become tougher, but... I hope you never give up chasing your dreams. Um... I heard this story. Somewhere in the world is a Pokémon that was made for fighting. A Pokémon made for fighting? Yep. They say it has so much fighting power, all it can think of is defeating anything it meets. That's a rather savage Pokémon. I shudder to think. Where might such a horrid Pokemon be now? Rumors say it is storing its power. They say it's sleeping in a dungeon somewhere. That rumor, it's true. Oh, nope, it's these guys. Got absolutely blasted. <laughs> They're slowly waddling towards us. They had to make, like, well, maybe not. That could just be their damage taken sprite, and then they just modified it a bit to have them move like that. Charizard and Blastoise! Oh my gosh! What happened to you? They're hurt bad. What exactly happened? Uh, it's what that why not was saying. We were wiped out by that Pokemon. What did you say? Uh, there's no mistake. It said it was born to fight. But that Pokemon's power. There was nothing fake about it! It really was the most powerful. Yeah. Charizard! Are you okay? There's a cave far in the west. It's there. I never want to go back again. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Blastoise went down too! They need help now! I'll go get someone! Oh, it really exists. Pokemon that tough. But you know? So we now know that Pokemon is in the Western Cave. I still don't feel like going out there. Going anywhere like that would be too scary by half. I'm scared too. Wah, Buffet! The cave shunned by all out of fear. The Western Cave is now open for exploration! Well... Hmm. Considering that we unlocked that through a... Bobbity ba a 40-level dungeon. I'm trying to think. If it is indeed Mewtwo, I would assume that it would have a 99-level dungeon. Or, like, 99 floor. That's just how I think it would go. <laughs> Hello. Hello, ho, ho. But since we unlocked this dungeon... In fact, didn't I read somewhere that the Mewtwo dungeon was 99 floors? Meh. Well, first things first. Well, actually, first things first. I'm going to... First see if the... Well, why am I doing that? Well, actually, I, I just want to know ahead of time. I'm going to look up the Western Cave and see if there are any, like, keyed areas. There's a beauty scarf and requires a key, but that's it. Very well. A beauty scarf. In fact, what is a beauty scarf? I want to know now. 
What are you, Beauty Scarf? What do you do? Beauty Scarf. It causes Feebas to evolve into Melodic. Huh. Very specific, but I'm also the, uh... I am the one who played Eevee. Oh, thank you very much, Esper Magic, for the raid! I hope your stream was well right now. We are, I presume, going to head into a nightmare dungeon to face off against Mewtwo! Which will be quite fun! I'm gonna have to really prepare. We're gonna take... A few huge apples. We'll take at least two. We'll see if the Kesleon has anything. Do you have any huge apples that I can buy? Damn, but he does have a max elixir, so we'll go ahead and buy that. And then... In fact, I'll probably put away two normal apples. Hmm. Yeah, we'll put away two normal app. No. We'll put away one normal apple. We'll take out one more huge apple. And then we will take out another reviver seed. Just in case. And then we will see if we can buy the final friend area. Let me check my items. Reviver seed, three reviver seeds, three max elixirs, a decent amount of apples. I do believe we are ready because, let's see, do you have anything to say? Nope. <laughs> I do find that kind of funny. <laughs> like, surely you have to mention it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> That's kind of hilarious. He's just like, ah, yes, we came in, got absolutely obliterated. The strongest Pokemon did that. Not going to mention it after that. Ah, uh, silliness. We'll go ahead and buy this. And that should be all of the friend areas. Oops, oh, too bad. I'm fresh out of friend areas. Thank you, come again. And now I think that's literally all of them aside from the ones you get from... Ba -ba -ba random, like, missions. Where they're like, ah, save me and I'll give you land. Alright, we shall now go grab Shane, unless we have Shane. We already have Shane. Then, we shall save. Wait, do we have... I must have accidentally put Surf away by instinct, which is good enough for me. But now, off to the western cave we go. Why? <laughs> that seems so silly. But fine, we will bring Surf. I wonder what the like that design decision was for at the end of the day. Is it just like, ah, either they waste a move slot or they waste an inventory slot. And then if they die, they have to go to the same place where they got the original TM to get the TM back if they die in a dungeon and lose the TM. But either way, off we go to the Western Dungeon to see if we can do. It's not even a, we're auto-saving you in here? Okay. Sure. Silly me, I forgot my ally was not on the uh, go and hunt after people. This is a pretty dungeon. This is a pretty dungeon. These walls, they look very nice. That's quite nice. Very interesting. Like, no, like, even when other dungeons have unique tile sets, like, usually they don't even really look like... They still look like, yeah, walls and forest and stuff, but this... Why are you being dumb? <laughs> Ally, Shane, why are you, like, doing that? Overall, I think I might actually turn your moves off until we get to, like, an area where these guys are actually 
scary because they don't seem we'll check these guys. They don't seem actually threatening. I want to check every seed just on the offhand chance that they might be reviver seeds. Because if they are indeed reviver seed, I'm not going to turn that down. No real need for money at this point except for like the Kesleon shop and I I think I could count the number of things I bought from the Kesleon brothers on one hand. Oh, hey, a Reviver Seed! I, I just re remembered I have to be extra careful when it comes to, like, Reviver Seeds because there are fake seeds in this game. Or at least I think there are. That are... Oh, hey, a key? Oh, now you spawn keys! You bastards. Well, fine. I guess, like, out of all of them... The the locked away item that they potentially will give to me is the one that can only evolve Feebas. <laughs> not a not an HM. Not uh, the Lunar Ribbon, not the Friend Ribbon. The Feebas Ribbon. <laughs> It's the one that's like, hello, have a key. Hey, it's an Ekans. How dare you hit my friend with acid. Sorry, we are not taking anybody. Mostly because, uh, I do not want you guys wasting my reviver seeds. I shall not let random recruits take away all my reviver seeds. They are my reviver seeds to waste. I am so freaking happy that I have Traps here. Traps here is so handy. Like again, I do not think that I could functionally play this game if I did not have. Why do you do that, ally? Why do you move in stupid directions when I'm on a trap? Why not? You are just like, you game. My partner is one block away from me, and that is all that needs to be. My partner does not need to shift if he is literally already one diddly dang block away from me. Orientation is literally pointless. You'll hit the blockly. I probably should have swapped one of the useless. Like, uh, what's the word? Seed. I don't like the fact that they're giving me so many reviver seeds. And they are reviver seeds, unless the game is mean and only has the, like, fakes. Reviver seed. Wait, it actually said a thing. It said a thing about item master. Let's see. It can only be used by an item master. Huh. I assume that every Pokemon is an item master then. And then I... Should also be an item master, right? Or did I take that off for some reason? I took that off for some reason. I'll, I'll put it on. Oh, yes, because I was going through to see if I could, like, manage my IQ stars. Thinking, like, ah, the number of IQ stars I have di dictates things when it doesn't. Did I really take damage on the same turn that I healed? So they basically did no damage? That's hilarious. I love the day that there will be a long tunnel-like room that has a million Venomoths that all use that silver wind to punish me for my existence. I wanted to, like, see if there was anything in the wall there because it's like, ah, there's this weird Alco. What does it mean? Die, Venomoth. 
Well, let's see. I was thinking, I was talking about things. But I do wonder how long this dungeon will be. It's very pretty. N not exactly what you expect out of Mewtwo. Thank God for the super mobile. Follow your paths? No, I refuse. I make my own path. And of course, just to be safe in case the game decides to super screw me, I shall make a secondary. <laughs> I feel like sometimes they put, like, have the trap spawn in specific places purely to mess with the player. Scary face me all you want, you're still gonna die. Look how scary I am. Ah, yes, you are such a terrifying corpse. Hmm, this does make me wonder where... Like, then again, I don't think we've actually seen or heard mention of meat and meat consumption in this game at all. But I feel like it has to exist with some of the Pokemon Pokedex entries in the main series. Why did you do that? He was not in the room. How dare he enter the room and chase you away? Eh, we don't need to kill every Pokemon we come across. Oh, hey! It's a shift tree! Once again, the hilarity of running into one of the Pokemon from the, from the town, but not. So it's just like, oh, hey, guys, it's nice to see you again. Oh, God, why are you hitting me? Utterly hilarious, ain't it? And we'll just... Not the try attack. How about you try and attack next time? Haha. Uh -huh. Soon we are close to the funny level number. It's time like this that I lament my lack of rocks, but at the same time, I have no one. <laughs> Come to think of it, that's just like an annoying mechanic. We're gonna have some Pokemon run away at low health. Oh, hey, it's another vision of a possible future. Kill it. But it's just like having some Pokemon run away at low health makes it annoying because then you have to like box them in in a certain like area, which means wrangling you and your ally and the enemy all at once. And then you have to be the one to get the final hit on them. And it has to be like an up close and personal hit. I don't think it can be a ranged attack. I don't think they explain that, so I, f I feel sorry for any poor fool that's like, I'm gonna build a whole, like, a whole, like, uh, move set out of ranged moves, so I'll be super safe. And then they, like, get to a point where they need to, like, recruit Ho-Oh to get to Mewtwo, and they're like, why can't I recruit Ho-Oh? Like, not even maybe to, like, get to Mewtwo, it's just, like, they're just like, I'm going to recruit all the legendaries. And then, like, they only use ranged moves and are thus doomed. If you fight a Kangaskhan, do you also have to fight their child? And now we move on to level 18. Ah, welcome to hell. How dare you bite me? Now you must die. And now I level up as well. My poison has intensified, even though I don't really have a poison. Unless that's meant to be like my synchronicity ability, where it's like enemies that hit Umbreon with a status effect, then Umbreon's like poison flips that status effect back on him like an Uno reverse card. 
I have Uno reverse cards flowing through my veins. A sleep seed, don't need you. Granted, I have a shit ton of reviver seeds, so... I, again, makes me kind... Oh, hey, it's another vision of the future, except it's this one that we're in. Die, not me. You know you're in a late dang... <laughs> late dang? You're, you know you're in a late game dungeon when alternate, like, evolutions of the, like, starter Pokemon you could have chosen start showing up. It actually does start to feel like a alternate future that could have been. <laughs> this could have been you. This could have been you. Die, fool. We'll check out these items down here, but we've got to beeline it. I stepped on the trap, and that almost made it look like the trap caused my ally to run away. Yeah, it's just a blast seed. Ah. Haven't run into one of you before. You die all the same. Hello, Bayleaf. Once upon a time, you were a character in my Pokemon Mystery Dungeon story, but then then my brain was like, but what if we change things up? And now they are no longer a character in my Pokemon Mystery Dungeon story. A similar character is now filling their role. Where did you even come from? Oh, I guess the right side, I guess. Come. Quit it! I'm gonna have to burrow a hole so that we can just immediately leave. Granted, yes, I did tell my partner to essentially have fight ADHD. He's like, okay, we're gonna get out of here, go on to level 20. Oh, hey, an enemy! Fight, fight, fight! <laughs> and then we roll up on him. I find it funny, I did 99, he did 101. So now we know that that guy's health is <laughs> less than 200. We just gotta keep getting those <laughs> stairs down to the floor. Now we can fight this guy. And now I flee. How does this even work? We just appear next to a sleeping Pokemon. And then time for murder. I guess if we don't have anything else that is worthwhile. Like a heal seed. Actually a sleep seed first. That way we can have extra keys and then... If I want to, I can go to the other dungeons that have, like, little key locks and get them, like that, uh, friendship bow on, I forget, Mount Far Away. Why does the game do that? I hate it so much. I just feel like the partner should, like, automatically get out of the way, rather than be like, I'm gonna warp to another world! Unless there's, like, literally nowhere else it could go. Maybe it's just the programming of walk into ally swap places but still i feel like there could have been a way to get, like get around that getting hungry but what we got to do is let it go as long as possible then have one of our huge apples dapples die future <laughs> die future me that is me of the now you can... What is with all the traps going next to each other? You Satanist! How dare you steal my move? Granted, I upgraded that move to Screech, but still. That won't save you. Damn, it saved him. I want to join your team. We're going to go fight the strongest Pokemon, apparently. No. Be gone. For some reason, I had the feeling that an enemy Pokemon was going to come and distract Shane in that initial room. And yet, we've not run into an enemy Pokemon at all. 
Apparently, we've run into the Banker Bailey. Who took three hits to take down? Disturbing. I don't even know why I'm gathering money. It's literally useless to me now. Music change and floor plan change. The ground is now more... Cobblestone. Well, shit. I'll take you down so that my ally will focus on his own. I'll take care of you since you're the scariest. And then I'll let the Agron come down to me. You scare me more, so I'll kill you. I'll go ahead and smack you so you're away. And I'll now annihilate you. I find it funny that sand attack, the attack that's meant to make Pokemon miss more, has a very big tendency to miss. Your belly is empty. That's why I have huge apples. Although it is kind of nice that we've ran into a monster house that wasn't just, haha, <laughs> the exit was this way. The monster house was the exit all along. Again, I don't know why I'm gathering money. It's literally useless to me. Well, you're useless to me! Kill that man. His name is Man. Manny Man Man. Hello, Banker. Goodbye, Banker. The Banker is now dead. Headbutt all you want. My basic attack does 105 times your damage. I can kind of see why they took it away in future games. Like, well, technically, they make it less effective in future games by limiting it to, like, five damage. And then in the remake to this game, they made it, like, not exist. I still find that stupid. Oh, that's scary. Motherfucker. I'm gonna drink this ground iron. Okay, they definitely knew. We need to kill him and get out of here. Do I have anything? Just revivers, which thank God I brought a lot. Note to self, big dude is kill on sight. You rotten bastard. Almost made it. I almost could have made it out and cured myself. But yeah, big Pillsbury poison man. He is kill on sight. And now the irony, my uh, plain seed will be swapped for a heal. At least I think it's a heal. It's an ornberry. Oh no, it's the motherfucker. Oh no, it's the motherfucker. Ariyama. Who is taking very little damage. He still dies in two hits, but Jesus. Imagine a monster house of that size. With the same comparative number of enemy Pokemon you have to fight. Scary. I shall do my fear save. Oh, just a max elixir? I guess I'll eat it off the ground. Kill him. Fuck. Every step I took getting closer to him just terrified me more and more. Sleep seed can be swapped for the key because, again... Keys are a valuable resource. Ah, shit. 
It's a conga line of sumo men. Okay, these guys actually give a lot of experience. Well, at least when killed with a move. That is another interesting thing that kind of makes the game clash to me to a degree. Because in this game, like uh, the basic attack, like in this game and in Explorers, I think, the basic attack does a, duh, a bunch of damage and scales with your attack stat. And they specifically went out of their way to program in a system so if you kill an enemy with a basic attack, you have, like, less experience gain from that kill. But then slowly they just whittle away your ability to kill enemies with the basic attack, so it almost, it just feels odd. But like, hey, if you use uh, actual moves, you get more experience. Here's our, your incentive to do this. Let's see. Welcome. Zinc, huh? I could just eat it. It's because I have the money for it. No, I don't. If I wanted, I could just steal from him. Two zincs, huh? <laughs> if I wanted to, I could just... Un <laughs> well, I was like, I could just annihilate this guy. No, the, the scariest Pokemon in this game is a Kesselion. Because I know you can just steal from it. Just like the idea of just walking up, drinking it. He's just like, hey, you have to pay. And I'm like, I don't have that money. Then you will pay with your blood. Vastly amusing. Why the hell does this place have so many keys when as far as I read, there is only one treasure piece in this area. There's only one treasure room as far as I'm aware and I might just walk by it again it's it's the goddamn beauty scarf i have no reason to want to get it oh sure his sand attack hits me but at the same time my basic attacks are guaranteed to hit ha <laughs> get iq'd idiot what the fuck is a vital throw i guess it's just a fighter counter motherfucker I know, I gave him the move to go and fight enemies on site, literally on site, but come on. It's mostly because it's inefficient combat-wise to not have your ally just go and fight an enemy. Because if they aren't, pr like, set to, hey, go fight... They will spend all their time just standing next to you as you fight and die. Granted, it also means they go on suicide runs, but hey. But hey. But hey. Die, Hariyama. Now I have a weird, like, story, I like, story idea, I guess. Um, my brain's just like, oh, that's not a story idea, even though it is. It's like, what if this dungeon is, like, showing us the far-off future of all the people, like, uh, from the town? And it's just like, oh, no, we have to stop past them from doing something. And they all have to fight us. It's like, the people from the past, we know we must fight them. And then they just get absolutely obliterated. It's like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. They were the up-and-coming team. Money. Money that I don't really need. Oh, no, not this motherfucker, please. He must die immediately. His toxic move is too powerful. Seriously. I am already aggravated by poison, and the only reason I don't hate it super muchly is because walking around heals it more often than not. Why the fuck would you go there, you moron? You complete an utter meringue? Double motherfucker. Okay, you're just really fucking with me. 
Did I have a- did I just see an illusion of my ally become a trap? Wait, no, it's not there. It's on the ground. Throw. And see, Shane, that is why you need to have target priority mark. But you told me to go fight people. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> Wrapped by its foe, motherfucker. My ally will now fight you. Now that makes me wonder, like, in a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon world, what would happen if, like, a Pokemon invented a Pokeball? And it's just like, hello, welcome to Pokey Trafficking. Dig through the bushes. Dig through the bushes. I thought there would actually be a room over here. Apparently there is not. Seeing the pathing of my ally every time we pass by. A trap is just amuses me. It's like a super dodge. Activate my ninja enhancers. Why do you have so many keys for this place, you asshole? Solar Cave doesn't even give this many keys. And it has three HMs in it. This has a beauty scarf. Utterly ludicrous, man. All right, they're just having a fight back and forth. It's just like... Like, I guess because this is a late game dungeon, they're like, hey, uh, by this point, maybe you haven't gotten all of those uh, treasure room things. So what if we give them the opportunity to gather a bunch of uh, treasure keys for those rooms, which maybe that's what they're going for. It just feels very weird. I feel like there should be a dedicated treasure cave. Oh, hey, this seems like the ground pattern where Blastoise and Charizard got there just absolutely fucked. Milk tank? Hope your name is, ain't Whitney. Oh, hey, it's been a while since I've heard, like, this music of, like, ah, danger. Danger? This is a dungeon of danger. We shall head down to fight. Hey, a Skarmory! Die, Skarmory! Utterly magical. At this point with my abilities, this is less Pokemon Mystery Dungeon and more Pokemon Dungeon-like floor plan management. You know, I just realized that there were no Typhlosion. Or like, yeah, like that Pokemon line. It feels like they're, like, uh, two Pokemon from each, like, generation starters being spawned about in here. Ah, it's a sleep seed, not a revival seed. You better kill him. Murder him. Slap him so hard that his steel turns to iron. Motherfucker. Cook that bird. Onwards we go. Rip off his tongue. Now I'm imagining Full Metal Alchemist, but with Pokemon. Which hilariously makes Envy a ditto. Which amuses me to no end. Ah, 69. Nice. Give us a few Pokemon and we shall be 69 together. I don't trust you, so I'm just going to kill you. Your damage was fixed, but I don't trust you. So now you must die. Oh, yeah, and the reason that my brain went, hmm, Full Metal Alchemist with Pokemon, is because I immediately saw Lickitung, and I'm like, that's gluttony. 
Weird Al 69 together. How the fuck did you take so much damage? Who hurt you? Like, I just noticed that he had so much missing health. The fuck is the room? Uh, I guess down... No, not down there. Again, I hate that. <laughs> We're gonna dig down to the room down here. Because I feel like that's the only place that... The stairwell could be to the right. Unless I'm dumb. Like, I thought a room wouldn't be over here. You bastard. Eh, just a totter seed. Die, gluttony. Explode. Oh, hey! We can just do this. Fuck you, Mystery Dungeon. I am the master. No, you can't just dig... <gasps> ah, Reviver Seed. Thank God I stepped on that because these assholes just need to hold it and then they also revive. Which is just annoying. Hmm, I wonder if this will work. Not very effective. Still kill them. And <laughs> my brain for a moment there was like, Hey, hey, what if you... Gave up. One of, he gave up your HM. <laughs> I'm, yeah, motherfucker. I'll just take the. Well, my partner is off on a crazy streak. Well, at least he has decided to fight himself. I hate it when that happens sometimes, where it's just like, and now your ally shall go on a vigorous vacation. But what was I say? I was on the thing, like before I, I got completely... Ah, yes. I'm going to take the Reviver Seed instead of the Orin Berry, because at the end of the day, a Reviver Seed is just a better Orin Berry. You get a full health bar out of it, it instantly is used. You don't have to waste a turn using it. Well, I guess let's go ahead and grab that, why not? Again, we have, like, nothing to use our money on, but hey. Die, faker. You are not a real Pokemon. The real question is, will Mewtwo actually be a tough fight? I don't think that we need to recruit him for anything. But yeah, I think it would be a pain in the butt to recruit Mewtwo because if it really is Mewtwo at the end of this, like, dungeon, because it's at least an upwards of 50 levels. And I'm going to assume that it is indeed a 99 level. How, how the hell are you, like, trading misses that much? Oh, now you wait for me to get there and then you kill him. Sure. Go ahead and grab that, even though we have no purpose for money anymore. Die. Slaughter this man. else to say, just wandering through a long dungeon. Which, thanks to my level, so far, ha literally the only thing that's scary was that one guy with the stupid poison. It's super poison, except unless you literally have the cure for it, you're dead. 
which is annoying. I understand it's like, ah, yeah, status effects that can come up from time to time. Of course, I'm gonna nom that. Because at the end of the day... Well, actually, I think they, that changed. I'm so used to, like, the base game. Where... If the leader is gone, everything is over. I think they changed that in the remake. Where so long as somebody on your team makes it through the dungeon, it's good. Not so in this game. Granted, I think also before the end of the story, if your partner fainted as well, bad things happened. What's that? Is it a... Probo Pass? Oh no, it's a... Uh, what's your name? For Alligator. Farewell, Gator. You are now dead. What kind of trap is that? I don't want to step on it to find out. Ah, great. A sandstorm. Never mind. We are... <laughs> At the exit. Kill this man. Another iron. I shall ingest it immediately. Blast seed, that's useless to me. Is it just perpetual sandstorms from this time on? That's mean. Well, at least the end of the diddly dee is right over there. Please let the sandstorm levels just be blitzed, thanks to RNG. Oh no, it's an Alakazam. We're a Charizard away from fighting the entire, like, team that we didn't get to fight before. If I remember correctly, that's an ongoing, like, complaint of, like, people. The, like... I wish that we got to f actually fight Alakazam, Charizard, and Tyranitar. I think they apparently made the animation better for that little cutscene of your team fighting Team ACT. If true, very nice. Maybe someday I'll get the remake rescued Team DX on the Switch. It would be very interesting to play with all the changes that it has. Like, it's not like super duper many changes, but it's still enough changes that it's interesting. At least with the Sandstorm, apparently I heal on every goddamn step, which is nice. So it's enough to heal up from the the sandstorm. Not enough to heal up from the the toxic poison. I find it funny that like Tyranitar and presumably Charizard have more health than Alakazam. Then again, he's a special attack and defense Pokemon, not a normal defense and attack Pokemon. It's like walking up to uh, Professor Xavier and punching him in the face and being like, well, that wasn't hard. Yeah, because he's a psychic man. I have no care for the keys. I don't even know if there are that many key locations left in the game. Well, time to dig. Dig, 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 dig. How is there a sandstorm in the underground? At least I assume that, yeah, this has to be like caverns. We're in the Western Cave. How the hell is there a sandstorm underground? That's just silly. Imagine yourself. You're just your normal Vinosaur. Minding your own business. And then a random Grovile hip-checks you into a wall and you 
die. Do Alakazams literally just have 108 health? That would be hilarious. Once again, I just I do not care. I might be missing out on that beauty scarf, but I can just like presumably, like with every legendary, I won't be able to recruit Mewtwo on the first go anyway. If even if it is Mewtwo. Whichever legendary that it is that we're running into will probably not let us recruit them on the first go around. Again, even if I cared about the beauty scarf, which I kinda don't. Where the hell did that sandstorm come from? <laughs> we kill an Alakazam. Oh no. His death curse has activated. The sandstorm has begun. Gasp and shock. No, I guess the Alakazams are just getting slightly hardier with every floor. Hello, Tyranitar. You must now die. How dare you drop rocks on my head. Be gone, Satan. You must die, Dinosaur Man. Ah, oh, our 69s lasted for so, so few. So few. Such a short time our 69s were. Which is, again, hilarious because we're mostly just using our basic attacks, which has an experience point penalty on it. Jesus Christ. Apparently this is not a monster house. And with that, our 69s are completely over. Quit sliding rocks on me and making me cringe. Quit burying my friend. Rock slide! Rock slide! I'm just not gonna bother. <laughs> I'm not risking getting cringed to death. Kill this man. And kill this other man. And let's see what this is. Calcium! Perfect. I have no idea what it does. My health didn't get up, go up, which I thought that's what it was going to do. How dare you try to whip my friend. That's my job. How dare you live, Elakazam. You ever just angrily dig a wall? Slam into a wall. Say hello. Hello, wall. I'm here to kill you. If these walls could talk, they'd scream. At least... Hmm, I wonder. Does every other Pokemon on this floor get hit by the sandstorm? Or is that just if we acknowledge their existence? Oh, hey! I think we found the beauty scarf. I mean, not that overly great, but... I mean, it's, it's done with. Talk about convenience. We didn't randomly get the exit before we got the beauty scarf. Not that important to me, because it's literally just for Feebas. But still. Not the Tyranitar. Tyranicar. Tyrant Man. 
not my special defense. It's my defense that's special. Whatever will I do now? I guess exit the floor. Yeah, I'm just going to assume that this is a 99 level floor now. Considering that we are on level 60, and I don't think that there's like 70 to 80 floor dungeons. It's like, oh yeah. 40 or 99. Because that's balance. I don't like the amount of berries it's giving us. I think that implies things. And now my ally is going to get double hit by everything. He's going to get burns and sandstorms. Well, I guess let's see. Pekka Berry, what do you cure? Poison. Darn. Would be too much to ask if it was a uh, cure for burns, huh? I mean, it would be convenient. Oh, hey, it's this guy again. Even he is getting hit by the weather. If he dies to the weather, does that mean I get his stuff? I mean, I feel like that would be fair. He's not there tending his store if he dies and, and there's somebody there to take it. I think that would be hilarious. Jesus Christ, it is a herd of Tyranitar. These people must die. We're also fighting on an, a, a dizzying stomach. If only we went up, my ally would not have suffered so. Granted, he was also being attacked by enemies, and he managed to survive a sandstorm burn combo. Not bad. Ow. How dare. I'm going to put you to sleep, and then I'm going to beat you up in your sleep. Then again, I guess if it is a... Like, a super sleep brought on by... Then again, these are seeds that can make you breathe fire as well as, like, cause you to resuscitate to your prime... Oh, hey, just the end. So these are kind of magical seeds, so... Hey, what did I say about Typhlosion? I am going to say, though, if Blastoise and Charizard could, like, get... How did we get to back to 10? Back to 10 belly. Did I eat something? <laughs> they force-fed me a sleep seed, which filled my belly slightly. And, of course, nom nom zinc for me. Then again, I don't think there's that many things that are super effective against me. And because I drank the zinc, I will once again see the... We are getting dizzy hungry. I don't know why I said it like that. My brain is on fire. I've just been prepared to eat a huge apple at any moment for a bit now. And it's just never coming. But it'll be interesting. Because the berry... Because that's actually something interesting. The buried relic technically had three bosses, but they were spread out across the first half. And this, meanwhile, is a 99... Uh, presumably, I doubt it's going to just end at 80. But it is a long dungeon that is going to have a boss fight at the end. Which is new. Hey, you motherfucker. I'm going to roar at you and send you flying through the air like a ballerina. At least he decided to do a loop de loop and look for me. If we just went left. <laughs> Oh, 
Because let's see. I do believe that it is time we eat our next huge apple. Apple! Apple! Hey, apple! You motherfucker! Quit throwing people around with your voice. Hmm. That kind of implies that Arcanine would be the perfect uh, Dovahkiin in Skyrim Pokemon. You'd think it would be some kind of dragon type. Nope, it's actually Arcanine. Which is the legendary Pokemon according to its uh, Pokedex title. Excuse me, I'm trying to get to my friend who got roared away. Imagine if the Mystery Dungeon games, like, worked more like the original Pokemon games. So if you got hit by Roar, you got blasted away from the dungeon and had to do it all over again. That would be annoying. Ooh. Ah, oh, it's just a Max Elixir, but eh. Max Elixir is still good. I'll go ahead and nom it. Sixty-nine. Oh, we didn't get to be level sixty-nine on floor sixty-nine. Hey, Shane, it's what you could look like in the future. Like, maybe I could have, like, super evolved him to that point, but... I didn't see much point to it. I know that breaking through the walls just kind of messes up the dungeon a bit. But, eh. Uh, no, not the damage back at me. How dare. However, will I survive with my super regeneration? For the crimes of your kin, you die. Man, imagine if I didn't mess up that Ginseng and I had a tier 3 tackle attack. Think of the possibilities, Bobby. Well, actually, it is probably smart to come down here this way, down to the bottom right, because that's presumably where the exit is. I probably should not have done that. That, that could have killed me! If I didn't kill that, uh, Sceptile, and he survived my attack to rebound it back at me, that would have been the death of me! I'll quickly heal by dancing in place. Now we're on floor 70. As always, this is our emergency if something goes crazy. Save. And now we're fighting a Ninetales. You know, that super legendary Pokemon that cursed a human ages ago and apparently is still alive after centuries. And now we're fighting them. The Pokemon world makes no sense. I wonder what a partner Pokemon would do if it had max IQ and had the, like, super mobility feat. And it could just go through walls. If you just set it to, hey, go crazy, would it just carve a path of destruction wherever it went? That would actually be kind of amusing. Uh, that could be uh, drinkable, but it's just an Orenberry sadness. Not a confuse, Ray. Luckily, I have the non-traitor ability, so my random attacks can't hurt my ally. And now we're both confused. I'm being assaulted from all sides. Thank God that that Sceptile didn't... What does that even do? All right, I feel like Confuse Ray is bullshit. How about you go and die? I'm sorry, but Confuse Ray that lasts that long? No, that's bullshit. And I don't think that there's an IQ ability that's just like, hey, I'm immune to confusion. Technically, I think there is the, hey, status effects wear off faster, but I don't think that would have helped me there. Uh, 
<laughs> Shane took no damage from a fire attack. Amazing. My Grovile partner is a badass. Exit, where art thou? We have found exit. Ah, oh, come on, you bastard. Not pursuit. I kind of wish that I had, like, individual move control over my partner sometimes. Because it's kind of worthless to a degree to just have him have his abilities on at all times because... Then he'll just, like, randomly choose not to use it. Like an enemy has Pursuit on, he'll just go, ah, basic attack. And it's not like that's fixed in the remake. If I read correctly, they your ally still has the very same thing. He can do it, just not you. That's eh, just money, not a not a soft drink. Through the power of Coca-Cola, I increase my defense. Well, that's convenient. Just speed run these floors. And I'm just gonna annihilate you so you can't do extra harm. Goodbye. So long as you don't do Pursuit in time, I will just beat you to death. If you do Pursuit in time, I will beat you to death, but extra. Well, it's time for you to die. Horrible, painful death. Goodbye. Beat up this man. Although I do find it funny now, looking at the Sceptile sprite. Does Trico go from a bright green to a darker green on Grovile back to a bright green on Sceptile? What does that mean? Does it mean anything? Is it just a weirdness of the universe? Why did you not move up with me? <laughs> I'm going to heal my health and then you will die. Goodbye, fool. Roll up on this septile. Beat him to death with our heads. Why are there so many traps down here? Why are all the nightmares come into play? And another motherfucker! I break down my wall, he comes through the door! How dare he! At least we haven't run into any of, like, the super poison dudes. But we have run into the Super Confusion Men. What does Safeguard even do? We have leveled up like three times in this dungeon. And we've died twice, all because of shenanigans. We died once to poison, and we died once to the Confusion Spam. Uh, uh, I'm going to use my abilities to kill at least two of you because I am not going to allow you. <laughs> you are not going to be able to confusion spam me, motherfuckers. And then he can deal with it. You know what? Uh, you probably need it more than I do. Wow. Another. And now he's going to die. Oh, fuck. Ah, this is why I brought a billion and one reviver seeds. Why did that septile have milk tank milk? I'm gonna keep Shane behind me. And now I level up too. 
And now we need to stand here and revitalize your health because we don't have any orange berries. We need to get him to at least over a hundred so he doesn't kill himself on a pursuit. All right, this guy survived three hits. Oh no. Are they leveling up their defenses? Putting their skill points to use. Why is, like, every major fire attack thrown at Shane just missing or doing no damage? Shane, the ultimate Grovile. He looks at fire and says, fuck off. Congratulations, your takedown move does more damage to you than it does me. Literally. Ah, exit time. Okay, uh, you look kind of scary. I don't like you. <laughs> Why does uh, Machamp look odd in their mystery dungeon sprite? We're just playing different rounds of patty cake, it seems. All right, there's just five billion Machamp in this level. All right. I thought we would find a room eventually, but no. You know what would be interesting if enemy Pokemon could go down to the next floor? And then you just, like, enter into a RNG monster house. Surprise! The enemies decided to make home here. You may now scream for your life. Thirty-three damage, huh? And here's the exit. We don't care about the key, because I again I don't think there's really anything that matters to me. Poor Shane, he is taking all the damage. Granted, the one time that he died due to actual damage was uh, from his own miscalculation. The enemy said, I will kill you. And instead, he killed himself. Well, I don't think I actually uh, got to say it because I got distracted, but how the hell did Charizard and Blastoise make their way through this entire dungeon only to get beaten by Mewtwo. Like, I guess they could have been, like, underprepared. So, like, they could have gone through the majority of the dungeon only to get to the end and, like, have no reviver seeds or anything, but... If they were capable of getting through all of this, unless Mewtwo is a menace... I just, I don't see it being all that bad. Now I need to read. What do you increase? My special attack. Oh no. Uh, in the matchup of Psychic versus Dark, I forget which is good. Like, genuinely. I think Dark wins? But I don't remember. And we don't have any more Alakazam that I can test that on. Then again, boss monsters haven't used attacks a lot. But still... Paranoia, paranoia. Mm, we have a lot of max elixir, so I'm just going to go ahead and ingest that. I'll go ahead and eat this calcium. 
And then I shall take this Reviver Seed. So I think technically now we are only down one Reviver Seed in overall amount that we have in our pockets. I'm going to assume that Reflect is like the special attack version of Pursuit. Reflects special attack damage. I still find it silly that traps can do that. I am Le Fool. And I guess down here. Ooh, we are getting near. Max Elixir. I already ate one, so I don't need it. I could have maybe thrown it at Shang, but I'm not sure if he needed any either. I have, there's just so many goddamn keys. It makes no sense. Machamp is getting pumped. And then he got dropped. We just keep on going. Keep on going. The exit is around here somewhere. Mud support all you want. You will now die. Quit existing and die already, Swampert. Oh no, not the million and one keys that I already have. There's the exit. Huzzah. So long as we don't do anything stupid, I don't think that we can die due to the amount of Reviver Seeds that we have. Unless the game just throws a ridiculous amount of Super Poisons at us and we have terrible stare RNG. Either that or Mewtwo is actually a Super Menace. That's always a possibility. Mine. mud all you want. You're still going to die, little man. Death comes for you. As death comes for us all. Oh, shit. I don't know why, but the visage of an uh, uh, Steelix is scary. He's still dead, though. Don't know why I was scared. Granted, it's not really so much if they can't die, so much if it will kill me. I'm just gonna annihilate you. Because that trap is in such an annoying place if I wanted to bring my partner in to do extra damage. Let me through. There are so many traps. I'm going to hit you and do more damage to myself than I did to you. You are the smartest Swampert. And now we are at, well, <laughs> we were at 10 levels. Now we're at nine levels. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> but Blastoise, I thought you said you never wanted to come down here again. Oh, no. Not that motherfucking bullshit. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. If you basic attack into a diddly D, it reveals traps? Is that how that works? I'm almost happy that I didn't know that. Because if I knew that before... I probably would have been obsessed with basic attacking all over the place just to make sure that I wasn't running into 
Super Damnation. Because I honestly hated traps so much before Trap Seer that if I knew that basic attacks revealed traps, I probably would have been doing that everywhere and just wasting all of my time. And now we're out of here, and everyone else can enjoy the sandstorm. Charizard, but I thought you said you didn't want to come here no more. Although, I wonder if in the Pokemon world, if it's super weird to see another Pokemon. You motherfucker. Ah, yes, we're gonna put a monster house on the exit in the 99th floor. I probably should have gone after him because Blastoise's Protect is a bitch. Quick, doing major damage. I need him alive. How could you miss? He's right in front of you. That goes for all of us. All right, I'm gonna let you get a hit in. Hopefully kill him, good. We have Calm Mind at home. So now we're gonna take this opportunity to heal him up because he just got eviscerated by a wing attack. This is such a handy way to heal. Who needs orange berries when you have time? Luckily he's gonna do protect so we can just leave. Goodbye. Alright, we're first gonna annihilate you so you can't do any wing attacks. Level up time! We have leveled up like five times in this dungeon. Please don't use Protect. Thank you. Once again, boost up the heals. Because again, why use Orin Berries when you can just use Time? Hello, chat. How you be? We are currently at least doing somewhat decently in our second 99-level floor dungeon. Just a few scenarios of shenanigans have passed by. Though, really, the main shenanigan came in the form of the Confuse Ray combo. And that's why I brought extra Reviver Seeds! Oh yeah, we're gonna go to the dungeon with the strongest Pokemon fighter to ever exist. Either that was gonna be like, uh, the Mirage Pokemon quest, of which it would be like, ah, just a thing of no regard. Or, it would actually be something important. Let's see. Uh, no, moves. I'm gonna go ahead and use a Max Elixir and take this. How am I? I am doing good! I actually kind of like that it's challenging me slightly, even if I do find... The ways that it has beaten me shenanigans. Killing me with the toxic poison one step away from a stair. Oh, now that was pain. Thank you for not using Protect, Mr. Blastoise. Ah, uh, but thank you again for not using Protect, Mr. Blastoise. <laughs> Although I do find it ever so slightly aggravating that this dungeon is just flooded with keys. And it has like one locked box. All the other places that have locked boxes and I didn't have a key? And they had like HMs or the Lunar Ribbon for my Umbreon evolution? Ah, oh, nah. <laughs> That's nothing. Oh, Jesus Christ. I did not know that was a move. Kill him now. But yeah, all the other places with locked boxes that actually interested me and I had no key because I did not know there was a locked box on those dungeons. No key. This place. 
that holds the Feebas Evolution Scarf. Ah. But yeah, this this dungeon that holds the scarf that is solely there to evolve Feebas. <laughs> That's the one that is flooded with keys. Kill this man now. God damn it. Oh, wait. I thought he used protect. How did he die? I was just pressing A again and again and again, so I wasn't paying attention to the actual specifics of what was going on. Because I'm curious, I'm just gonna dig through here. Ah, I was gonna laugh if that was actually the exit. Please do not use your evil. No evil protection. In Mystery Dungeon, I somehow found being underleveled for things less a pain than doing 10 missions in one area. Hmm. I guess it depends on, like, when in the game you are, as well as how you personally take the... How the game goes. For me, I mostly... Like, I probably could have gone through the game at the level I was before I grinded. But... Then... <laughs> I was very annoyed at the dungeons. Or not the dungeons, but the traps by then. By then, the traps just annoyed me so much that I figured I would power level to deal with the Pokemon easier. And then once I learned that an HM was locked behind a... Like, ah, you need to go over walls and over water to get this HM along with a key. I was like, fine, I'm gonna grind my IQ, which honestly wasn't that bad. And along the way of getting the super mobility from the IQ, I discover there is Trap Seer, which basically nullifies <laughs> traps entirely. And I'm just like, ow, oh, <laughs> I didn't even need to grind all that much. I take my time on every move because I've died to a lot of BS. That's understandable. Me, I'm just like, oh yeah, 99% of the time I can just annihilate everything. And then that 1% happens. At least I've never died to a deli bird. That would have been horrible. Although, the one BS that uh, I do think is quite shenanigans is escort missions on late game dungeons. Because you're just trying to walk around and then you're escort Pokemon, which is level one, is like, I'm going to fall into a spike trap. Whee! Never again. That motherfucking Blastoise is gonna hand over that protein if it's the last thing he goddamn does. Give me your vitamins, Blastoise, man! In the far off gym apocalypse where people fight for <laughs> vitamins. <laughs> ah, it was the wrong Blastoise. Well, he's gonna fight the Blastoise. Kill him! That's ah, still not the right Blastoise. We just keep running into Blastoises. Again, I find it hilarious because Blastoise himself came in here, got annihilated, and was just like, I'm never going to go into that dungeon again. And then we just find nothing but Blastoises. Are you the protein man? No. I one shot my opponents of, uh, while my team because I'm too cautious to take a hit. You can guess how many random healing items I've come across. <laughs> uh, very understandable. Like, depending on the enemy, I will definitely do the same. It's just most of the time they wait and I, like, kill a bunch of them. And then out of nowhere, they're like, whoa. Whoa, indeed. <laughs> this is like the third time. Not only is the start of this. Not only is the start of M uh, Monster Dungeon, Monster House, it's. Ah. Nightmares. I have 5,756 tiny reviver seeds. I don't think I have one tiny reviver seed. <laughs> At least I'm the one taking the damage. I can take it. Shane cannot. It's like that one meme image of a soldier kneeling in front of a sleeping child with knives just raining down upon him. Me protecting Shane. Ah, you bastard. 
I will annihilate your friends so we don't have two protected tortoises tattling upon me. Fight me, tortoise man! Good, he cannot do it again! And let's see, what are these TMs? Arrest and Bullet Seed. He already knows Bullet Seed. I think that's like the one TM I bought. The music changed and I thought, oh no, things changed. It's like, oh, because we were in the Monster House music. Every single time that happens. It's like, I swear, I almost never run into Monster Houses normally. Oh, we're here. We're at the fun place. Was it you who disturbed me in my sleep? Was it you? It's Mewtwo! My name is Mewtwo. He actually has an icon. If I wrote a page for every Reviver Seed I find, I'd have a book done. Honestly, you'd probably have many books done. Or one very, very long one. My name is Mewtwo. I came into being only to fight. I have secluded myself here and suspended animation. Would you like to know why? It's quite simple. If anyone such as you were to come along, I could defeat them at full power. Come on! First things first. Uh, let's go together. And let's see. I am... My brain is fried, so I don't know if dark moves work, but let's do it! Well, they missed either way. Which means I'm just gonna do my normal combo. Up smiggity schmack. I still love this boss remix. And then I beat you! And now I have to come through this 99 level dungeon a second time if I want to recruit you! Pain! <laughs> well, we went through that rather quickly. I'm so glad the later games you can't break your, uh, your move bind. That is very nice. It's been a long time since I played Explorers, and I am very much meaning to play the 3DS games eventually, so... I can't wait to really experience everything eventually. Just take those so I can just have them not clog up my diddly-dee. Now we shall go and grab Shane. I've got the Switch remake of the original. I do. Rem I don't think I heard anything super negative about it. The only thing that I read that I'm just like, oh no, was the uh, fact that they removed the basic fight ability. At least for the the main uh, party leader. And now we can just. I get rid of everything, like the plane seed. Let's see, uh, don't need you, don't need you. And while we could go through that 99 level dungeon again, instead, I feel like we should uh, make progress on a different kind, and then what I might do is go through the 99 level dungeon until we get to Mewtwo, and then we can fight Mewtwo again and hopefully, like, recruit him. Because I think I have the friend area that works for him. But instead, since we've been going for almost three hours, we shall do something very simple and recruit the legendary birds. I don't know why I imagine she has a portal to another dimension or her pouch to store stuff. Maybe. Or maybe her child is the brains of the operation. He lives in the pouch after all. Now we just need to quickly make our way through Mount Thunder. 
so that we can get to its peak. I still find it hilarious that it's just like early on in the game, it's like, oh no, a dungeon that's like 13 levels long? We have to put a checkpoint at the uh, 10 floor count. It's just too much. And then later on, surprise, 99 levels, no breaks. I just find it very funny. And I don't want to change, like, Shane's uh, uh, tactics because I want to make sure that I'm the one that gets the final hit on the Zapdos. Granted, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if th this legendary Pokemon was one to not be recruited because of my partner taking the last hit. I still think that you, your partner should be able to, like, hit them and get the recruit icon thingy. But oh well. I remember getting max accuracy on Parish Song and cleaning, clearing through floors. Jesus. Every single time, like, I forget what, like, dungeon it was, but Politoads just keep on trying to throw Parish Song at me. And it just never landed. I'm just like, I hope that never does. It sounds scary. Stanta wants to join. No. I'm not really one for recruiting Pokemon. I'm a very simple mon. It's just me and my partner. Who no longer follows me around town anymore. Ever since he evolved, he thought he was too cool for school. Max X Repair Song, Absol on the remake, just sweep floors with one attack. That sounds busted. <laughs> just gotta bring all the max elixir so you can just do it again and again and again. <laughs> then again, one sounds like it's enough to make way for like 90% of the dungeon. Eventually, I think I'll get the remake. It's just... Brain is like, well, I already have the original. I used another thing to give me like 26 Paris Shongs. That does sound like it'll do it. And now, for some reason, that reminds me of the time that I wasted a Ginseng. Because I'm like, oh, I'll just drink it off the floor, and then that didn't work. Hey. And I have a two thirds hit chance. Yeah. Honestly, thinking about it from an in-universe perspective, that must just sound be terrifying. You ever hear of the wailing doom of the dungeon? Pokemon say that when they hear this sound in a dungeon, everything just goes black. And now we go on. Once again, it's just hilarious. Oh no, not 10 floors. You need a break. Again, I understand it's just like early on in the game, but still. With how the later dungeons go, it just feels ridiculous. If Mewtwo's dungeon played by the same rules, there would be like 10 checkpoints. Which, considering some of the shenanigans, <laughs> might actually make it super fair. How dare you quick attack me. Legend has it, when the human's second partner sings, all will perish. Your, part <laughs> your partner brags, Actually, I just swallowed the meteor. And every time I sing, I spit out a, a chunk of it to destroy everything around me. need to remember, I need to reset my partner's tactic so he doesn't get the last hit. Or first hit. Then again, I've disabled all his moves, so it shouldn't be terrible if he even tries. 
But at the same time, this is Zapdos from early on in the game. <laughs> I do find it amusing, though. It's just like, you're beating up an enemy Pokemon, and they're like, Hmm, I think I might want to join this Pokemon. They are very strong. Then your partner gets the final hit, and they're like, Nah, screw this guy! Just gonna give him all the gummies since I'm at max. Then who knows? I don't even know what, like, IQ abilities I would want for him now. He has Trap Avoider, which is all I really need. I think. Hello, Zapdos. So you're back! Since we've last met, how much have you furthered your team? How much stronger? Your power. Demonstrate it for me! All right. Get away! I'm not even gonna take a chance. I'm not gonna risk, like, getting a crit with my Shadow Ball. Ah, he didn't cl- ah. Why is it a percentage chance? Why can't you just be? Meh. Imagine if Pokemon Mystery Dungeon had a normal RPG skills. Like, imagine Eevee with lockpicking skill. <laughs> I can steal from the Kesleon bros. Ha ha ha. And now we gotta go again. Here I was, being kind. Thinking the game would just be like, ah, yes, you did it. Good for you. We're coming, Zapados, you motherfucker. Might beat him down, and he has the audacity to turn me down. Oh, he's still on getaway mode. Let's go together. I thought about taking all the text in PMD1 and turning it into a Mad Lib. <laughs> that might be a fun party game. Granted, that could also work in the way of like... If you turn it into a, a certain level of Mad Lib, it basically becomes a D&D &D campaign. Insert your own whatever you want here. And then on this mountain, the legendary Butterfree comes down with lightning. Here I was, just thinking that it would be, ah, nice and fun, just go get Zapdos. It'll be easy, I said. And then he decided not to join. Oh, you want to join now? So he has the worm from the legend. Kill the cactus. Kill the lightning dog. Every single time I see a max elixir now, my brain just instantly goes, but what if it's a vitamin? And it's just like, no, it's not. I scrapped the idea in favor of making Mad Libs from my own writing. Yeah, that's probably more admirable in a, in the way of, like, it flexes your original writing a bit, probably a bit more. Forces you to maybe extend out of your comfort zone of just like, ah, Pokemon. I myself should really try to flesh out my own original writings more. But the fanfics are just so much fun. Causes the passion to spike a lot more for some reason. That's why I need to get faster at writing so I can do, like, both. My passion writing and then the other passion writing. So I can have two cakes and eat them too. My characters are named after ideas and adjectives, so rather than asking for a name, I ask for one of those. Hmm, that's an interesting way of doing it. Can lead to 
unique names. Kind of makes me think of... Probably my brain does, like, mixing up the theme things, but... Kind of makes me think of the old PBS cartoon, Cyber Chase, where it's like Motherboard, Digit, The Hacker. Kind of those, are like, different titles and nouns of their own right. Funny thing, my writing started as fanfiction of PMD. And funnily, for me, midway through a bunch of original writing, my brain was just like, Hey, <laughs> would you like to make a PMD fanfic? I'm still midway through uh, chapter two. For some reason, my brain just got hit with writer's block hard rate lately. Though I think I chalk that up to my perfectionism, where it d my brain doesn't want to make a first draft. My brain is just like, no, I want to make the perfect chapter in one go. Instead of just writing a bunch of things, a flow of consciousness, then I come back later and fix it up. No, my brain's like, no, the perfect first, like, writing right now. Now I'm making a parody of Welcome to the Internet, but it's only for Pokemon. Yeah, that could work. Welcome to the Pokemon world. I could see that being a very unique parody. <laughs> now I'm imagining Professor Oak singing Welcome to the Internet. Welcome to the Internet! Take a look around. Are you a boy or a girl? No, Growlithe, I don't want you on my team. I'm here for the big cojones. I swear, it's like every gummy except grass grows up here. And that one spawned on like a grass tile. How dare it. We shall not... All of the dogs are sleeping. The lightning dog, the wa- uh, No, the water dog is the one that's not here. I don't think there is a water dog unless you count Vaporeon. You shall suffer! Probably because my brain is working on a, on loops right now. My brain just went Skyrim, but with Pokemon. As I have declared earlier... Ah, who was it? Ah, uh, yes, Arcanine would be the Dova King. Because he already knows the Fus Roda with Roar. Welcome to the fandom. I know it sounds profound. We know so much about these creatures, but are you a boy or a girl? I haven't seen you around. Probably just butchered the pacing of that. Because it has been a long time since I've heard the song. It's a very good song. But I just, like, played it to death a long time ago. Here, exit. Where are you, exit? I'm coming to find you! Who needs to follow the path when I can make my own? You're the second Growlithe that I shall turn down this day. I've written like 20 songs compulsively. That's a mood. Usually my brain comes up with like lyrics sometimes, but I usually lose the beat after the lyrics become a thing. Since we last met, how much have you furthered? How much stronger your power? Demonstrate it for me. <laughs> Stay away, Shane. I shall take care of this. I shall annihilate this man. Die. My pen name is also the name of my fursona. Understandable. It's been a long time since I made my, like, handle, internet handle. It's mostly because, I'm gonna see, 
Can I have it? <laughs> Can I just recruit you? Or is it hard-baked? Because I would hate to, like, have to grind these guys off-screen. Mostly because just going through the same dungeon again and again and again on the offhand hopes would be very annoying. But yeah, it's been a long time since I made my internet handle, so I... Didn't really name it after anything. It's just like, hey, I'm gonna make a name that I like. Join me, motherfucker. Let's try again. Just in case. It's entirely possible that once you enter an area, the, like, recruitment rate is, like, locked in. And it's just like, sorry, that's not gonna happen, you silly fool. I'm gonna give it, like, two more tries if it doesn't work. Oh, well. Please, Zapdos, join me! I probably should have... I should have saved before I in entered this level. Oh, well. Darn thee. Zapdos, you bastard. But after that... Because I think the next story thing I need is after the... Like, I, there are certain other things I could do, I think. But, like, the main path that I want to go down requires me to get the legendary birds. And then there's, like, a few other things after that. Also named my persona off of the main character of my writing. That's just how it goes, isn't it? You name a character something, you're like, damn it, that's actually a good name. That's kind of what happened with my name. Because originally it was like Neon something else. But then I made a character called Icy Wings. And then I was just like, I'm going to steal that. I call him Frail. For some reason my mind jumped to Flail. So that's probably not at all what is meant. I don't think that that's really much. Did we do? Yes, he is medieval weaponry. We shall use him as a flail. Like how Banjo uses Kazooie as a weapon. Hmm, but we've been going for three hours. So, I guess what I'll do is I will... Meh. Because on the one hand, I do want to fight like Zapdos and everything on stream, but at the same time, they apparently have a very low recruitment rate. Uh -huh. All right. What it will do is I will capture Zapdos and Moltres off stream, then like have it just before Mewtwo and we can start there, recruit Mewtwo, and then go and flail against Articuno for a while and see where we go from there next stream. The irony is that he is a medieval fantasy character. <laughs> Ain't that just how it works out? But yeah, that's probably what I'll do. So that there's at least some progress. All it is is, hey, go through old dungeon, fight old boss, recruit them, maybe. And then we can see if we... <laughs> we'll see if we can recruit Mewtwo next time. Again, the dungeon I'll probably just do halfway off stream. That way there's at least some stuff, but it's not like all the same stuff. Because I feel like a 99 floor dungeon is only really interesting the first time through, especially for watching. And I don't really trust myself being able to make conversation for 99 floors that I have already been through without really going over the same topics again and again. So yeah, I'll do two of the birds off stream, then prepare us to recruit Mewtwo and beg to the gods that he comes through. The enemy Pokemon be like, hey, I just met you in this is crazy. Exactly. And then we'll beg the recruitment gods to make Articuno nice and kind. And then we'll see what else things we can do and need D next time. But thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you want more from me, I have two YouTube channels. 
the edited content YouTube channel, Neon Icy Wings. I swear content is coming in the future. And then the streaming YouTube channel, where streams are uploaded if, after they are done, as well as streamed at the same time, because I am not a Twitch partner, so I can dual stream. Ha ha! So if you prefer YouTube, you can watch there. Or if you prefer Twitch, you can watch me on twitch.tv slash neonicywings. Elsewise, I also have social medias where you can find me posting art like my little avatar in the corner. There's that Twitch. No, not Twitch. I don't even stream my art on Twitch because I'm too self-conscious about my process. Man. But like Twitter, Tumblr, Newgrounds, Inkblot, DeviantArt, so many places. And all of those links can be found along with like some of my writing links in my link tree, which should be linktr.ee slash neonicywings. Or the direct link can just be found in all those like bios and description places and places links are placed. Because the internet can't be simple anymore. Can it? But yes, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye, bye.